Good morning and welcome to Incarnation. I'm Katie and I'll be leading worship today. We are so pleased to have all of you with us on this really steamy weekend. That's a reminder that spring is ending, I guess. Um, And a special welcome to those of you who are joining us on Zoom. Let us begin. Alleluia. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let's pray together the colic for purity. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ says. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Jesus scatters the seeds of his kingdom. Far and wide he announces new birth. I, the Lord of creation, am making new every inch of this groaning earth. Like the smallest of seeds in the wind, is the kingdom of God as it's sown. But the powers of hell shall against it fail when the kingdom of God is grown. Though we wait for the Lord of the harvest and we long for our King to appear, even now, by the Spirit's power, the kingdom of God is near. He has planted the seeds of his kingdom in the hearts of the poor and the weak. He declares to the captives, I bring good news. You shall be mighty oaks of strength. Though we wait for the Lord of the harvest, and we long for our King to appear, even now in our hearts by the Spirit's power, the kingdom of God is. Through the city of God flows a river, from the throne of the Lamb waters pour. And behold, on the 
banks grows a tree of life where the nations are healed and restored. Though we wait for the Lord of the harvest and we long for a king to appear, even now in our hearts by the Spirit's power, the kingdom of God is near. Though we wait for the Lord of the harvest, and we long for our King to appear, even now in our hearts by the Spirit's power, the kingdom of God is near. The kingdom of God is near. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as surpass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. I invite you in joining with me to pray for our kids. And I also invite you to reach out your hands to the kids around us. Lord God, I pray for the children in our midst. I pray that they would grow up like young shoots before you. That in the church and through the church, they might grow into the full flower of all that you desire for them. I pray that they would see you in every flower in every family member, in every friend, that they might know you in all things and know you as the one in whom all their good desires are fulfilled. Amen. I invite us to now sing the kids' song. And if there's any kids who want to join up front, yeah. feel free to come up. Definitely come up. So um, we're going to sing it in sort of a round. And uh, Miss Lee here is going to start again on the beginning, uh, as soon as we reach the he knows me and he loves me part. So if you want to follow her, follow her. If you want to follow me, follow me. You ready? You ready? Are you going to sing with me? The Lord is my shepherd. I'll walk with him always. He knows me and he loves me. I'll walk with him always. Always, always, I'll walk with him always. Always, always, I'll walk with him always. Always, always, I'll walk with him always. Always, always. I'll walk with him always. I invite you to be seated for the readings. A reading from Joel chapter 2, verses 21 through 27. Do not fear, O soil, be glad and rejoice, for the Lord has done great things. Do not fear, you animals of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness are green, the tree bears its fruit, the fig tree and the vine give their full yield. O children of Zion, be glad and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given the early rain for your vindication. He has poured down for you abundant rain, the early and the later rain as before. The threshing floor shall be full of grain. The vats shall overflow, overflow with wine and oil. I will repay you for the years that the swarming locust has eaten, the hopper, the destroyer, and the cutter, my great army that I sent against you. You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied, and praise the name of the Lord your God, 
who has dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never again be put to shame. You shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I, the Lord, am your God, and there, there is no other. And my people shall never again be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join us in praying Psalm 107, verses 1 to 7 and 35 to 43. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is gracious, and his mercy endures forever. Let those whom the Lord has redeemed give thanks, whom he has delivered from the hand of the enemy. And gathered them out of the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. They went astray in the wilderness, even in the desert, and found no city to dwell in. They were hungry and thirsty, and their soul fainted within them. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He led them forth by a straight path, until they came to a city where they might dwell. Again, he makes the wilderness into pools of water, and dry ground into water springs. And there he sets the hungry, that they may build a city to dwell in. That they may sow their land and plant vineyards to yield the fruits of increase. He blesses them so that they might multiply exceedingly and does not allow their cattle to decrease. And again, when they are diminished and brought low through oppression, through any plague or trouble. Though he pours contempt on princes and lets them wander in the pathless wilderness. Yet he helps the poor out of misery and increases their households like a flock of sheep. The righteous will consider this and rejoice, and the mouth of all wickedness shall be stopped. Whoever is wise will ponder these things and shall understand the loving kindness of the Lord. A reading from Revelation, chapter 21, verses 1 to 4 and 22, chapter 22, verses 1 to 5. <laughs> then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them, they will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more, mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord God, the Almighty and the Lamb. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb through the middle of the street of the city. On either side of the river is the tree of life, with its twelve kinds of fruit, producing its fruit each month, and the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. Nothing accursed will be found there any more, but the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it, and his servants will worship him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. And there will be no more night. They need no light of lamp or sun, for the Lord God will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me. And those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. 
Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will reveal yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered him, Those who love me will keep my word, and my Father will love them, and we will keep and we will come to them and make our home with them. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but is from the Father who sent me. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away, and I am coming to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father, because the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you this before it occurs, so that when it does occur, you may believe. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Christ. Well, good morning, everyone. My name is Amy, and I'm one of the pastors here. And today is Rogation Sunday. It's this extremely old, like 1,500-year-old, and not any more terribly well-known day on the church calendar, but it's one of my personal favorites. So traditionally, on Rogation Sunday, a congregation would all process out into the fields, And they would pray right there for the soil and for the harvest and for the farmers. And then sometimes they would actually take sticks and they would walk the whole perimeter of the church's property and they would beat the line. It's called beating the boundary. And kids, you're welcome to try this rogation practice at home today. (laughs) But it was just a way of remembering and marking This geographic area, this little plot of land, is what God has entrusted to us to tend. Now, obviously, this comes from a time when the church owned property, and we don't really know what that's like outside of that white cargo van parked outside that houses our sound equipment. But if we try to think about Rogation Sunday in our own context here at Incarnation, we have to be a little bit creative. Our fields are not any property that the church owns. Our fields are the neighborhoods where all of us live. They're the places where we all work, the houses and the apartments and the condos that we live in, the places where we just live and serve out the days of our lives. But even if those fields look different, I love the way Rogation Sunday helps us imagine this really local way of praying this really local way of thinking about what God is doing in the world. It's a way of saying that this place, this little patch of ground under our feet, it matters. And what we do here with our hands and our bodies and our words, it all matters. It's a way of just declaring that this place and that our lives are the domain that God has given us to cultivate and to bless. This is where we're going to bear witness to God's faithfulness, and this is the place where we're going to see his kingdom breaking through. And I love the way Dallas Willard puts it in his book, The Divine Conspiracy, and I'm almost positive I've quoted this before, but I couldn't find it, so maybe this will be old and maybe this will be new. But he says, Where transformation is actually carried out is in our real life, where we dwell. We must accept the circumstances we constantly find ourselves in as the place of God's kingdom and blessing. God has yet to bless anyone except where they actually are. And that's the resounding message of Rogation Sunday, and more importantly, of all of today's scriptures that God is blessing you and me and this community 
where we actually are, that he actually wants to move in right here and make a home in our lives. And so in John's gospel, which David just read, Jesus says it like this, those who love me will keep my word and my father will love them and we will come to them and make our home with them. Now, if you were here last week, then you might remember that this little section of John's gospel for a few chapters is what we call the farewell discourse. It's where they're all sitting around the table after the Last Supper, and Jesus is telling them what they're going to need to know to make sense of everything that's about to happen, his crucifixion, his resurrection, his ascension. It's kind of his last chance to say goodbye and to give them what they need. And so today, in this little passage, he's helping them kind of put the pieces together for what it's going to be like to be a disciple when their teacher isn't with them anymore. What is discipleship going to look like when Jesus has gone away? And in this verse, there are two parts to the discipleship. There is our work, and there's God's work. And our work is in that first half of the verse, those who love me will keep my word. Our work is just to love Jesus and out of that love to act on his word, to keep his word. And so it's this way of loving, not just with our affections, not just with our feelings, though those are important, but to love Jesus with our lives, to love him with what we do. We bring our lives into agreement with all those words that Jesus taught us. All those words about loving our enemies, about serving the poor and the immigrant and those in prison, about welcoming children and making space for them. All those words about forgiveness, way past what seems reasonable. All those words about praying in non-flashy ways, about not putting heavy religious burdens on people that keep them away from God, about not hoarding our wealth for ourselves, but giving it away, and so many other words of Jesus's. Keeping those words is how we love Jesus. We let those words guide and govern and shape our lives so that more and more the place where we are standing begins to look and feel like the kingdom of God. It looks like a place of flourishing, a place of goodness and truth and beauty and justice. But those words of Jesus are really challenging. I think we all want to live in a world that is shaped by Jesus' words, but we're all really bad at living that way, even for a minute. And Jesus knows this. And so a few verses later, he promises to send the Holy Spirit, who is going to teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Jesus will give us what we need to keep his words. And then Jesus also gives us his peace. He says, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not let them be afraid. If you love me, you would rejoice that I'm going to the Father. Jesus expects that discipleship, that a life of being his disciple, is actually a peaceful experience. It's a non-anxious experience. It's even a joyful experience. This work of loving Jesus and keeping his word isn't meant to trouble us or to frighten us, but to actually bring us joy and peace. So it's definitely not an invitation to scrutinize ourselves and our motives and our own purity at every moment and wonder and agonize about whether we're measuring up or whether we're doing enough or whether we're getting it right. Being Jesus' disciple is peaceful. It is full of spiritual power from the Holy Spirit. It's an act of love. And it's this invitation into the joy of seeing Jesus' words become lived, little by little, more and more, wherever we actually are. 
Well, I said a minute ago that there are two parts to this verse about being Jesus' disciples. There's our work and there's God's work. And all of what I've just been talking about is our work. Those who love me will keep my word. But the second part of the verse describes God's work. My Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. God's work is to love us and to come to us and to make his home with us. And this language of God making a home with us, it runs all through the scriptures today. So for the rest of our time, we're going to look at the text from Joel that Mary Tobin read and that text from Revelation that Chrissy read and just get a better sense of what Jesus means when he says he'll come and make his home with us. Because my hope is that we will end with a sense of how abundant this promise really is that he's giving us, which will enable us to live as those peaceful disciples. So we'll start with the prophet Joel. Now, Joel was writing to people who were living in sort of an apocalyptic wasteland. It probably looked and felt a bit like a war zone because they have just experienced catastrophe after catastrophe. They had this massive plague of multiple kinds of locusts that came through and just stripped every plant bare. And then a drought came. (coughs) So the soil became dry and hard and lifeless. And then the fires came. And these wildfires just burned out of control. And everywhere, animals and people were starving. And even the worship had stopped because there wasn't enough grain or enough grapes to make bread or wine for the sacrifices. And God calls Joel to prophesy after this. So Joel isn't one of these prophets who goes to the people and says, hey, bad stuff is going to happen if you don't repent. Joel is actually someone who comes in after the bad stuff has happened. And he calls the people to prayer, to lament, to fasting. He helps them give voice to what has just happened and to grieve and to cry out to God to restore everything that's been lost, which is almost everything. And then in the passage that Mary Tobin read today, he gives this picture, this vision of what the restoration of God might look like in the future. And in that vision, every single catastrophe that the people have experienced is reversed. It gets undone. So the soil becomes fertile. The fields become green. Suddenly the trees are bearing fruit again. The storehouses are overflowing. It rains early and late in the day. And then Joel says this. He says, I will repay you for the years that the swarming locust has eaten. The hopper, the destroyer, and the cutter, my great army that I sent against you. You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God, who has dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never again be put to shame you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. There's that language of home again. You shall know that I am in the midst of my people. That is the pinnacle of God's restoration in this vision to Joel, this promise to make a home with his people, to be in their midst. And so we see in Joel that God is making his home with his people in this extremely local in this extremely communal and specific way. He makes his home with a people, and he makes his home in a place. And he heals with this incredibly local specificity, right down to every type of locust whose damage he's going to undo. He's making his dwelling within this ecosystem of humans and insects and animals and soil and weather. And he intends to restore all of it to abundance and to flourishing. And as I sat with the text this week, I found this vision from Joel just particularly helpful. Because even though we have not dealt with locusts or drought or any of those things, as I look back at the past few years, it does feel like catastrophe after catastrophe after catastrophe. 
And if I look around at the place where we are dwelling, it looks barren. The ground looks hard. There are deep trenches in the ground. And we are in need of deep healing and deep restorative rains. And so I was comforted to imagine that this is the place that God wants to make his home with us, right here where we actually are. Now, finally, if we turn to that uh, passage in Revelation, we get another glimpse of that inbreaking kingdom. John describes this vision of the new heavens and the new earth and the new Jerusalem, this new city coming down from heaven. And he hears a voice saying this. See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his people. And God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. The home of God is among mortals. And what's interesting here is that it's not this agrarian vision like in Joel. It's a city. And John goes into all this detail. That's why there was that funny leap in the verses that Chrissy read about the layout and the architecture and the building materials and the scale of the city, more detail than the Sunday lectionary thought we needed today. But the whole city is just this marvel of divine engineering. And this city is definitely a place where things grow. It's a place of abundance. There is a river that seems to flow through Main Street and a tree that somehow grows on both sides of it and gives fruit every month a new kind of fruit, and whose leaves are for the healing of the nations. So things grow and flourish and heal in this city, but it's still a city. And listen, I love Wendell Berry. I write bad nature poetry on the regular. I like bird watching. I harbor some sort of farm fantasies. So when I picture heaven, I don't picture a city. I picture something more like the set of all creatures, great and small. But that is not the vision that God gives us here. And I really love the way Eugene Peterson writes about this in this amazing book that he wrote on Revelation. If you haven't read it, I recommend. He says, the biblical heaven is not a nice environment far removed from the stress of city life. It's the invasion of the city by the city. We enter heaven not by escaping what we don't like, but by the sanctification of the place in which God has placed us. There is not a hint of escapism in St. John's heaven. This is not a long weekend away from the responsibilities of employment and citizenship, but the intensification and healing of them. And it makes sense, because John's revelation was a letter written to seven churches in seven cities, seven communities trying to keep the words of Jesus in places that were full of corruption and exploitation and dehumanization and poverty and violence. And so again, we have this vision of God making his home with people in a place that is extremely local. God is healing these cities with this inbreaking city. And so we can hear in the revelation of John the echo of the words of Jesus from John's gospel. Those who love me will keep my word, and my Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. And wherever that is, (coughs) wherever that is, It becomes this place of healing and of flourishing, this abundant outpost of the kingdom. Well, in just a minute, we'll go into our time of silence. And as we do, I just want to invite you to consider, again, those words of Jesus from the gospel. To ask, where will God's kingdom break into your life as it actually is? Where is God longing to make his home with you where you actually are, right here?
Where can you keep the words of Jesus in some small way, some very local, very specific way, right here? And where will God bring healing and abundance and flourishing and restoration right where you actually are? So we'll take a minute of silence. house be my abode 
and all my works be praise there would I find a settled rest while others go and come no more a stranger nor a guest but like a child at home but like a child at home. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. I invite you to be seated for the prayers. Surely he has done great things. Let us pray for the church and the world, saying, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, on this Rogation Sunday, we give thanks for Randolph Elementary School, the Douglas Park neighborhood, and Columbia Pike. Please be with and bless each student and their families, each person who works or volunteers here and their families. Please make this a safe place of learning, an environment that is rich. Please be with all who live in this neighborhood and those who live and work along Columbia Pike. We thank you for the diversity of people who live here. Help us to be good and loving neighbors. May your love and light shine through us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our partners this week are Jeremy and Nicole of Trinity on the Border in Texas. Lord, bless their work as they provide a loving welcome to those seeking refuge and fresh beginnings in the United States. May they have your eyes and ears, your wisdom and love, as they work with your image bearers as they cross the border. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our country of the, of the week is Mongolia, a country in between, between Russia and China, between high mountains and low desert lands, between a rock and a hard place, as they have limited agricultural land, water shortage, and great environmental challenges. Only 1% are believers. Lord, please bless their relationships with their neighbors. 
Please bless the fruitfulness of the land that they can cultivate. Please give, give wisdom and the ability to face environmental challenges. Lord, please increase the harvest and bless the labor of those who work to share your truth and love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, our world seems much smaller since the days the church began the tradition of Rogation Sunday. When we ask you to bless the land, we are aware that the food on almost every table is dependent upon neighbors near and far. The war in Ukraine, the rising temperatures in India, the continuing struggle with COVID in China and around the world, politics and greed can and will have an impact on food supply. Lord, please help us to be good stewards of the land. Lord, may the hungry be fed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, please end the war in Ukraine. Be with the children and all the people whose lives have been turned upside down, especially Aiden, Ivan, Fan, Nastia, and Margaret. Please heal their bodies, minds, and hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Here at home, we pray for Bishop John Guernsey and Archbishop Foley Beach, for Amy, David, Josie, Emily, and Quatley. You know who our new associate pastor is. Please be with them. We pray for our national leaders, the leaders of our commonwealth, and those who lead here in Arlington County. Please bless, lead, and guide all who make all of them to make good decisions that please you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Finally, Lord, we ask that you be with each one of us. Help us grow in grace and wisdom. Heal the wounds of our hearts. Heal and restore our bodies and those of our loved ones. Please help us love one another well. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor, first silently and then aloud together. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ our Lord, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sin to all those who sincerely repent and with true faith turn to him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. The peace of the Lord be with you. And with I invite you to extend the peace to those around you.
All right, well, I love a good vigorous peacemaking, but I would invite you to find your seats. Thank you. Uh, well, again, my name is Amy, and I am the rector here at Incarnation, and I just have a few announcements for our life together. The first, which is if you are visiting with us, we have um, stuff for you, basically. Uh, there are blue cards out on the table in the hallway where you can give us your name and your contact information. We won't harass you, but we love to get to know you. Um, you can also take a book of common prayer, which is what our liturgy comes from. We have tons of those to give away. Um, a new revised standard version Bible, if you would like to add that to your Bible collection. That's the version we read from. Or an incarnation mug for hot beverages of all kinds. So all of that stuff is there. Please take and enjoy and also um, make a point to come and introduce yourself after the service. Uh, one thing that is not up on the slide, but that I do want to mention, and I'm going to put it here at the beginning so I don't forget, which is we will have a child safety training right after church on June 12th. So that's in three Sundays time. Um, so if you think that you might be expired on your child safety training, it's required every two years for anyone who volunteers with children, um, but it's also just a great thing to know how we think about keeping our kids safe. I would encourage you to talk to Ginny, you wanna, yeah, um, or to me, and um, yeah, we'll, we'll have information on signing up soon, but just save the date, June 12th, right after the service. Also on Wednesday, we are serving at Restoration Immigration Legal Aid's uh, clinic for asylum seekers. We'll be serving a meal, and we still have a couple of slots that need filling. So if you have never been to a clinic or if you've been and want to go back, that's the position I'm in, um, please sign up. Uh, the sign up information is on the outreach page of our website. And we're also collecting baby items for um, one of the Ryla clients who is seeking asylum and actually lives right here in the Columbia Pike neighborhood. So it's just a really easy way to love a neighbor of ours. Uh, one thing we're really excited about is that this guy is being ordained to the priesthood next Saturday. Yeah. Uh, that'll be Saturday at 10 a.m. at Greenbrier Baptist, and we would love for all of you to attend. Everyone is invited, so please come and celebrate David. Uh, we're really delighted. Also, Pentecost is coming up, so not next Sunday, but the Sunday after. And we have a tradition of keeping Pentecost kind of wild and crazy around here. So the kids generally lead the service, and we will continue in that tradition. We have lots of roles for them to do. We'll also have a children's choir and parents of children. You probably got an email about that. If you're interested in that, your kids can come at 9 a.m. that Sunday just to practice, and we'll send more information about that. There's also an opportunity for kids to submit prayers of the people. You can talk to Josie about that. And then during our homily time, we're going to try again what we did last year, where we listen to the Holy Spirit together and we give space to share what we're hearing or to share a story of the Spirit's work in our lives. So it's kind of a big Holy Spirit Pentecost experience. So you might want to be thinking of some of those stories that you might be willing to share, especially if you have a discomfort with awkward silences. Just prepare yourself. June 5th is Pentecost. The other things that we do on Pentecost are we wear red, so please wear red. And it's the church's birthday, so we celebrate. It'll be a donut Sunday. We'll have cake and international items, because this is the day when the gospel was translated into all those languages and all sorts of surprises. So come on Pentecost. It's really exciting. Anyway. Uh, now, as we turn toward the table in just a moment, uh, just a word about how we practice communion here, the ushers will invite you forward, kind of starting from the front to the back. And the table is open to anyone who is baptized and following Jesus, whether or not you normally attend this church. When you come forward, you can just place your hands open, and we will dip a piece of bread in the wine and then place it in your hands. If you need gluten-free bread and wine, it'll be on this side. And so try to come on this line if you remember, and then just ask your server for gluten-free. And if you don't want to receive communion, we would love for you to come forward anyway. You can just cross your arms over your chest and we'll pray a prayer of blessing over you. So now as we turn toward the table, 
I invite you to walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me love. Where there is injury, let me pardon. Where there is doubt, let me so O oh, Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. Make Where there's despair, give them your hope. Where there is darkness, shine the light. Where there is sadness, bring your joy. O oh, divine master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it's in giving that we And it's important that we are pardoned, and it's in dying that we are born to eternal life. For it's in giving that we And it's important that we are pardoned, and it's in dying that we are born to eternal love. O oh, Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. Amen. Amen. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head above all. All things come from you, O Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. 
Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb, who is offered for us and has taken away the sins of the world, who by his death has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full, full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had sinned against you and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent your only Son, Jesus Christ, into the world for our salvation. By the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, he became flesh and dwelt among us. In obedience to your will, he stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself once for all, that by his suffering and death we might be saved. By his resurrection, he broke the bonds of death, trampling hell and Satan under his feet. And as our great high priest, he ascended to your right hand in glory, that we might come with confidence before the throne of grace. On the night on which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which was given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, Jesus took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink this, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, and we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your word and Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. And sanctify us also that we might worthily receive this holy sacrament and be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us with all your saints into the joy of your heavenly kingdom, that we shall see our Lord face to face. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, 
and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. We do not presume to come to this your table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your abundant and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose character is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Dan riku zusu dunya nenga na hene or tadan kaberese mera medet bize dan riku zusu dunya nenga na hene or tadan Kadir is in These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. When the fields are dry and the winter is long Blessed are the meek, the hungry, the poor When my soul is downcast and my voice has no song For mercy, for comfort, I wait on the Lord In the harvest feast or the fallow ground My certain hope is in Jesus found My lot, my cup my portion sure, whatever comes we shall endure, whatever comes we shall endure. On a cross of wood his blood was outpoured, 
He rose from the ground like a bird to the sky, bringing peace to our violence and crushing death's door. Our maker incarnate, our God who provides. In the harvest feast in the fallow ground, my certain hope is in Jesus found. My lot, my cup, my portion sure, whatever comes we shall endure. Whatever comes we shall endure. Come, oh, come, Emmanuel. Come, oh, come, Emmanuel. When the earth beneath me crumbles and quakes, not a sparrow falls, not a hair from the head. When his hand to guide me, my shield and my strength. In joy or in sorrow, in life or in death. In the harvest feast or the fallow ground, my certain hope is in Jesus found. My lot, my cup, my portion sure, whatever comes we shall endure, whatever comes we shall endure. My lot, my cup, my portion sure, whatever comes we shall endure, whatever comes we shall endure. And everybody. <clears throat> sowing in the morning, sowing seeds of kindness, sowing in the noontide and the dewy. Waiting for the harvest and the time of reaping, we shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. Sowing in the sunshine, sowing in the shadows, fearing neither clouds nor winter's chilly breeze. By and by the harvest and the labor ended, we shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. Going forth with weeping, sowing for the master. Though the loss sustained, our spirit often grieves. When our weeping's over, he will bid us welcome. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. Bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. 
Amen. All our problems we send to the cross of Christ. All our difficulties we send to the cross of Christ. All the devil's works we send to the cross of Christ. And all of our hopes we set on the risen Christ. The peace of God which passes all understanding guard your hearts and minds and keep you in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you.